I wanted to make a quick video showing people how to hook up an S7 1200 to a Skyward Drive. Um, this is going to be done in Steam and B17 Tia Portal. I hadn't really seen any videos on how to do it in English, so I wanted to see if I could just make this one, put it out there, see if I could help a couple people along. Now, I'm working with an S7 1200 DC DC relay. That doesn't really matter, but for configuration's sake, figured I'd tell y'all. Over on the network view, you see I got a little touch screen, got my CPU, and over here I have my Profinet GA800 device. Now the way we get this configured is we're going to have to connect to it through our accessible devices through online access. Go to your car, whatever switch you got going on. Go to online and diagnostics. And what you're going to have to do in order to get this thing talking like you're probably hoping is you need to assign it a Profinet device name. Now all devices that work on Profinet require a Profinet device name. You could have that IP address locked in the drive and locked in your program, but it's not going to do anything until you give it a Profinet device name. So we're going to go into the other tab over here. Oops, not this one. Yeah, we'll get to it from here. So we're going to go over here. We're going to look at our properties tab. Now that Profinet device name that you give it has to be the same as the one you assign in this window for your Profinet device name. If you check Generate Profinet device name automatically. Just go ahead, copy, paste that, and bring it into that window. Now, you can't connect this to your Profinet network or whatever until you get your uh, Profinet name assigned through the online diagnostics. Now, once that's assigned, you can move forward and you can, you can go from there. You can make your block. Um, the next thing you're going to have to do. Alright, continuing on. So now we're going to have to put the option card into our network view. Once you put the option card into the network view, you're going to take it, you're going to hook it up to the controller and add it to the topology. Wow, it's in the topology now. Now, once. Your new Kiskawa Drive is in your topology. You're going to click on it. You're going to go on over to Device View. You get the properties of that little Ethernet switch. I'm just going to go ahead and click on it. We're going to add in our little standard telegram. Number one, 5PZD. The way you get there. Hardware catalog and all that. Opera identity is going to be 286. That's important information. We'll need it later. We're going to double click on this. Go here. Here's your Ethernet address 192.168.0.4. Your Profinet name, of course, is going to be down here. Now, if you select that generate Profinet device name automatically, this is the name that you will need to copy paste into the window over here. So, Theoretically, if I was going to do it again, I'm going to hit copy, go online, paste this into that little window, and assign that device the Profinet device name. Next, what I'm going to do is scroll on up. We're going to compile. You can do it up there, we can do it from this window. Let's do it from this window this time. Hardware and software only changes. There we go. Let's see if she gives me any errors. Yeah, a couple warnings. We'll be all right. Now, once hardware and software is being configured, we're going to go over to this little area. Going to add me a new network. There's a new network. Going to take our Yaskawa function block. Going to bring it into the program. Here it is. Here is the G800 function block. Um, just a couple 
things to note about it. This, of course, is where you give it the frequency reference that you want. This is your forward run. And this is where you're going to put your telegram. Now, let's go get that telegram. We're going to go to default tag table. I'm going to scroll on down. Now, what you're going to notice is that you have your standard telegram right here. It's going to be module number 286. Previous one I used was number 278. So what we're going to do, we're going to take that, copy it, and then we're going to come over to our control, go hardware telegram, we're going to paste that in there. Now it knows it's number 286. It's pretty smart, isn't it? Now we're going to go back over here. We're just going to have a look at it so y'all can see it. And this is uh this is about all hooked up. Um, once again, we're going to confirm that we do in fact have the right drive selected because you know you could be dealing with multiple. Um, oh, all right, come on. Where's your interface? Yep. Internet IP address system constants, and there it is. 283 to 285, and over here, 286. There's your command bit. Good deal. So we're going to go over to your Skywell interface. It's going to go to General, Private Net. Come on, I want to get to the module. Come on, give me the module. I just had it in front of me. Alright, we're going to go to the standard telegram maybe. Maybe that's where they decide to put it. There it is, you go to standard telegram. So now we're going to scroll on down. Come on. There we go. A couple more things to note about this uh, control, the way we control this. Now you have either Yaskawa or formerly Profi Drive. Again, I'm using Tape Portal V17, so it's a little newer than 15, 13, or whatever. Um, you could choose Yaskawa or formerly Profi Drive. Now this is going to decide what control method you're going to use with this block. Uh, I just go ahead and use the Scowl one. They made it for their drive. It works. Just That's how I do it. Um, over here, once again, standard telegram plus 5PZD. That's the one I, I'm using in this video, or it's the one I got it to work with. So, yeah, that's uh, going to be everything. Thank you very much, and uh, take it easy. End of the video, I'll uh, show a little demonstration of the actual drive running with the touchscreen CPU and HMI as a proof of concept. So here is the touchscreen I made to go with the drive. And of course inside of it, got a little S7-1200 controller, same old configuration we just had in that little video. So here, you got a start, stop, set point, and output speed. So 50% speed translates to 30 hertz. If I go to, let's go with, oop, well, let me do 100, go to 99. 99 is going to be about 60 hertz, the maximum speed. Let's go ahead and bring that on back down to 50% speed. Well, now when I hit the start button over here, there she goes. It starts ramping up. My little output dialer right there. It's going to tell me the actual speed that it's running on. You know, isn't it fun for operators or, you know, it's for maintenance personnel or whoever to see that. Now we're going to hit the stop button. I'm going to show something kind of neat. Might help you troubleshoot it later on. So if I come over here and I give it a zero speed reference and I hit run or the start button right here, nothing. Nothing's moving. You see that the output speed isn't on, and the run light is just going to sit there flashing, saying, I'm ready to run, but you ain't telling me nothing. I'm just I'm going to run at zero, since you told me to run at zero. So there's a drive. It's running at zero. Now let's give it a little speed reference, 5%. There it goes. It's going to run at 5%. And that's actually how many hertz it's running at. 3.07, 2.98. It's going to match up to this. I'll try to come together to tell you what the actual speed on the drive is. Hit the stop button. That's it.
That's how you connect the Escala drive to a Siemens S7-1200 CPU.